In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make an autoimmune paleo or, or AIP diet friendly cherry balsamic pot roast that you can either make for dinner tonight or put in the freezer for later. If you watched last week's video, then you saw that I made an AIP Thai chicken soup that you could either freeze for later or make for dinner tonight. And this is the second of the recipes from this three AIP dinner freezer meals mini plan that I have available for you for free in my paleo freebie library. I will link to that below if you, in case you want to get that. Um, but this recipe will be in there and on my website in a little while. Um, but in here you get the recipes, a shopping list, and uh, you also get labels that you can print out and put onto your bag so that way you know what it is and it just makes it really easy. It's all in here, you can do this and it shouldn't take you more than an hour to make these three meals. You can double them, have them for emergencies or whenever you need them. So today I'm making the cherry balsamic pot roast from this and this one's just a nice warming dish. Um, I apologize for the light if it looks a little weird today. It is like a cold, cold, snowy day out and so I'm using all of my normal kitchen lights instead of natural light and I know I look a little yellow and weird but I apologize for that but it also makes the perfect night to make this dish. So I will actually be making this for dinner tonight but I'm going to show you how to put it into the bag and how easy that is and then I'm going to just dump the bag into the slow cooker and cook it for dinner. Prior to coming onto this video, I went ahead and I diced up one small medium yellow onion and then also about four to five uh, cloves of garlic. It's about like two teaspoons-ish. Uh, my cloves are really small, so that's about what you want. You're also gonna want a three pound beef boneless chuck roast. Um, and that's one great thing about this recipe is that beef chuck roast tends to go on sale quite a bit. And so you could find it on sale and then make this dish, freeze it for later, and then you'll have a cheaper meal yet not, you know, it'll still be great and everything like that. It'll just be cheaper and you can just take advantage of the sales. And then you're going to need that one medium yellow onion that's been diced, uh, four-ish cloves of garlic for about two teaspoons, a 12 ounce bag of frozen sweet pitted cherries. Um, I have this one, it's a 10 ounce. Don't freak out if you can't find 12 ounce. Um, this one I got at my Kroger King Supers, but um, I also have uh, a huge bag from Costco that I tend to use. So you're gonna want about two cups. So around that amount. Don't freak out if your, your quantities aren't exact. This is not an exact science, it's not baking. Just do, you know, what you can. And then you're gonna want a half cup of balsamic vinegar. Make sure it's AIP compliant and that there's no added ingredients to it that you don't need. And three tablespoons of olive oil, one teaspoon of dry thyme, and then a half teaspoon of sea salt. And that's all you're gonna need. So let me just show you how easy it is just to put this into the freezer. You're gonna just take everything and put it into a bag. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, let's put it all in a bag. So you're gonna take your chuck roast, put that in the bottom, put in your garlic, and your onions, half cup of balsamic vinegar, three tablespoons of olive oil, one teaspoon of dry thyme, and a half teaspoon of sea salt. And then the 10 to 12 ounces or two cups of cherries. All right, when that's all done, you just take it, get all of the air out of it. And then I kind of like to just massage it a little bit to kind of mix up the ingredients. It doesn't have to be anything like exciting and like strenuous here, just, just to kind of mix them up. And then make sure all the air is out, lay it flat. And then I still like to lay it flat in my freezer, even though it's not gonna uh, be as flat as like a soup, it still kind of saves room if you lay it flat. And then you can stack it up like a book if you need to afterwards to save room. Um, oh, and also make sure you put the labels on. Um, a tip with that is I actually print out the labels from uh, my guide and then I put them on printer paper just regular printer paper and then I use clear packing tape over it I find that they stick better than label or sticker paper because they tend to come off in the freezer And then you have this thing that you have no idea what it is So I like to just uh, use the clear packing tape and then in terms of cooking this I give three different methods in my guide uh, an oven uh, instant pot or slow cooker and my personal favorite is the slow cooker just because this one's a really great just kind of put it in throw it and forget about it kind of thing the instant pot one's still great uh, if you have less time and then the stove is great if you don't happen to have either of those two kind of things so first of all you're going to want to make sure you take this out of the freezer about 
the night beforehand or um, like a couple of days beforehand just to kind of let it thaw. Uh, you can cook it from frozen in the Instant Pot, but uh, I tend to like this one better thawed. And so thawed out. And then if you're gonna use the oven to cook it, it does take more babysitting than the other methods, uh, a little bit more, you know, having to tend to it, but it's still not a bad method. You're gonna want a, a large oven safe pot and then you're going to pour the contents of this bag into the pot, put it in the oven at 350 degrees, and then leave it there for like three to four hours. You're gonna wanna check it after an hour though to make sure, it, uh, to make sure it doesn't seem too dry or anything. And if it does, you can add some chicken or beef stock or even some water into the pan to kind of just give it a little bit more moisture. And just keep doing that until it's like easily shredded with a fork. With the Instant Pot, you're gonna uh, pour the contents of this bag into the basin of the Instant Pot, and then you're gonna add a half cup of water. There's just not enough liquid in this uh, to really meet the requirements of an Instant Pot, so add a half cup of water. It's gonna be fine. You'll have a little bit more of a sauce, but it'll be fine. And then you're gonna put the lid on, turn the valve to sealing, and then uh, press the manual button up to 60, and then let it go, and it's gonna cook at 60 minutes um, at high pressure. And then when it's done, when, once it's beeped, let it naturally release for 10 minutes and then you can turn the valve to release the rest of the pressure and take it out. And the cooking time is really not that much different if it's from frozen. Um, I would check it after 60 and if it still needs time, put the lid back on and then cook it again for another 10 to 15 minutes. And then the slow cooker, like I said, is my favorite with this just because all I have to do is pour the contents of the bag into the slow cooker and let it cook for 68 hours and that's it. So that's truly a set it and forget it kind of thing. And then all you have to do is just serve it. I like to shred it up and uh, just kind of take some of the cherries and some of the sauce and the beef and then just put it over like mashed cauliflower is really good. Uh, you can have a side of roasted broccoli or roasted Brussels sprouts or roasted Romanesco. If you've never seen that, it's like a cross between broccoli and cauliflower. All of those are delicious with this and make a very hearty winter yummy warming meal. And again, you can get this full recipe and the recipe for two other freezer cooker meals that are autoimmune paleo friendly in my paleo freebie library, which I will link to below. I will see you guys next week.